Welcome to Good Mood, Good Food. I am your host, Joanne Johnson, and I am so glad that you are here. We have got an action-packed show for y'all tonight. We have CIA Media Zone, Tony Wright in the house, as well as Daniel Bird of the band Ellis Bird. We've got some wonderful songs coming up. We are gonna be talking about some, just you know how we do, the motivational stuff. We're gonna be showing you and telling you how you become successful on a shoestring budget. What makes you fueled, what keeps you going, how you do what you do. Uh, we're gonna be working on that and you know we have to bring the great food we're trying to do those meals that heal sometimes we do comfort food but tonight it's a meal that can possibly heal we are doing gluten-free um, to rest our adrenals and for people with celiac disease we're gonna be doing some gluten-free spring rolls with chicken and also a cauliflower fried rice so stay tuned when we come back we're gonna start having a lot of fun I'll see you in just a minute all right we are back you guys, I am so excited. I have my good friend Tony Wright with me from CIA Media. You're branding it today. I love I'm, that. I'm, I'm making sure all the branding is always right. going. You've got to. You've got to. So you are here with me today, and we're going to be making these spring rolls that I just mentioned before okay. the break, and then cauliflower fried rice. And that is a way to get kids, you know, and people who don't like vegetables to eat their vegetables because they okay. think they're eating something sinful, but they're not. So right. we're going to do that. I want to talk about your career, what's going on. I want you to just share with everybody you know because you have so many wonderful projects that are going on okay. so I want to talk about that and also we have Daniel Bird in the house and he you know he told us before he's gonna be doing sitting on the dock of the bay by Otis Redding I love that song I love that song I'm so excited so we're gonna get started let's go ahead and we're gonna turn it over to Daniel Okay. okay, and then um, let's get started I'm excited I'm excited all right too. Daniel ready. Bird everybody from the band Ellis Bird y'all but that was really good it was awesome that was i mean your voice it's amazing to look at you because you're so sweet and i mean not to be offensive but he <laughs> looks a little bit young right but that voice that just comes out i mean that that was something Thanks. how old how old were you when you started singing uh i just started singing this summer so what wow yeah our last summer yeah yeah so 
Seriously. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's amazing. So what's your inspiration? How did you, I mean, tell, tell us about that, how you got started. And, you know, you're drawing, obviously, from the blues in, which you're going to sing some blues for us later. All right, yes, ma'am. So tell us about that. Um, well, I always grew up loving Eric Clapton. He was my Of course. Okay. Who doesn't love Eric Clapton? Yeah, yeah. And, okay. Uh, when I first thing I listened to with him was when he was with BB King. It was a CD called "Riding with the King," and from there it was just downhill for me. Oh wow! So uh, I knew I had to sing if I wanted to get out there. So I got with the great Miss Jamie Wright, and she yes. was uh, she gave me some vocal lessons. I'm still uh-huh. doing vocal lessons with her. So you are. D- this is cousin. this is Jamie's cousin. Did you know yeah, that? Yeah, my my cousin. Yeah. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So when, once you yeah. Want to take your career somewhere else, you know, what I'm saying Jamie can get you there, you know, yeah. get you some some contacts through Sony and Atlantic. Yeah. That is so fun. And she's amazing. She's yes, amazing yes, as well. Yes. And so, I mean, that's a good coach to have. For sure, for sure. Well, awesome. So we're looking forward to you. You're going to be coming back on at the end of the show, and you're going to be doing some blues. Tell us what you're going to be, what you're going to be singing that time. It's an old song called Drifting Blues. Okay. It's been covered by tons of different blues artists, but, of course, Clapton is the best to do it. So All right. Do it like All right. We're looking forward to it. He and I are going to start cooking. Okay. Go ahead and do your thing. Get ready. Right. Okay? And, um, and I thank you. I'm excited. I'm super glad that you're here with us. Thank you for having me. Right. Right. Yes, yes. All right. Now, you ready? I'm ready. We are going to be doing some cooking. Now, All do right. You tell me, do you cook at home? I'm going to turn my... You all have seen what happened to me last time with my burner. The last two times, I nearly burned the house down, okay? Because oh, I cook man. that way. I don't cook on this little burner, and it was terrible. My eyelashes almost fried. <laughs> my hair went straight down. I was sweating like a giant... You know what? It was terrible. Okay, so you talk. I'm going to turn this on for just a minute. Go. All right. All right. Well, I'm glad that I'm certified as a medical tech. That way we can Thank get you, Jesus. everything right. But, uh, <laughs> Thank you, but, Jesus. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I do cook at home. Um, I didn't get this size just lifting weights every day. You <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I mean, I do cook at home. Okay. And I, I, I love to feel that I am very creative when it comes to food cooking. Excellent. Um, um, I try to cook stuff like on the Food Network from time to time. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, not to hurt my ego. My fiance tells me it tastes good. So I'm hoping she's not lying to me. She's not <laughs> lying. Men can cook. And men can absolutely cook. Oh, yeah. I, mean, yeah. I come from a great cooking male mm-hmm. ego. So. Um, like I said, and then, you know, my cousin was on your show not too long ago, Jamie Wright. So, yes. you know, we both love to eat. So that means we both have to love how to cook, um, no matter how crazy our schedules get. So, um, well, so we, we, we definitely love to eat and I definitely love to cook. I do too. I do too. And I, you'll notice on this show, I always try to do things ahead of time. So okay. like this morning before we left for church, we went ahead and threw some chicken breast in the crock pot. And okay. I do that on Sundays. I always throw some sort of meat in the crock pot and I only lightly spice it so that you can use it throughout the week to make a variety of dishes. Okay. So I thought, okay, you know, keeping in the whole, you know, feeling of gluten free, right that we wanted to do the cauliflower rice and i want to show people how easy this is to do you, using things that you already have in your cupboard you don't have to run out to the store okay, okay? and things that are that are fairly cost effective so we have a little sesame oil okay. and we've got our wok going on and we've got our little tools hopefully we have what we need what we did is we took cauliflower and we just pulsed it in the food processor just raw cauliflower okay all right now, and we've got our frozen, our frozen veggies, and we've got some ham. Okay. Okay. This is just those little ham chunks. You can use any kind of a meat that you want, but I tend to love this. It already smells good because of that sesame oil. And I don't know about y'all, but y'all, I don't know if y'all can hear the popping, but my yeah. stomach's already turning. It's <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah. So. I mean, we want to know how to make really good food really fast. Right. And, you know, and again, meals that heal, and, and that's kind of what we focus on. But last week, I'm telling you something, we made a Mississippi pot roast. No, all the neighbors got slapped. I mean, Man. it was so good. That thing was so good. It has pepperoncinis in it, you know, wow. and it is just fantastic. Any weasel. So I'm we're going to let gonna this. I'm just going to come by and just get food like once a week. You, <laughs> so. Hey, you know, my door is always open, all so right. you can do that. But anyway, so can you do me a favor? Can sure. you start just kind of dicing this cabbage up? Because that's sure. going to be for the spring rolls. So okay. all we're doing is warming our ham, okay? Warming it through. And my wok, I absolutely love my wok. I, I mean, I cook everything in here, you know? Absolutely love it. But another part of, the, of what we try to show people on the show is doing things really quickly, right? right. If you can do something in under 15 minutes, that's ideal. And this particular show, it's live. No cuts, no edits. So they're seeing how long this truly takes. You all, this smells so good. I know, y'all. Like, if y'all actually could be here right now, 
and hate smell it for this you. ham. Yeah. Hate it. Hate it. They're not. You know, more for us, right? More for us and the rest of the crew. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now, I'm just going to kind of take this out for just a second. Okay. I'm just warming it a little bit because I'm going to stick it back in at the end. And what I want to do is put my eggs in here. Okay. Because you have to have scrambled eggs in your fried rice, right? Right. All right. Hang on. It's being difficult on me. See, this little burner, y'all, I'm just not used to this little burner at all. Okay, almost. Almost. All right, so let's cracky our eggs. Okay. okay. That hurt a lot. Okay, no, it didn't really. Okay. <laughs> okay. It didn't really. Now, mm -hmm. one of the things I wanted to ask you real quick, because I have a lot of college people that follow me on like social media and stuff. Yeah. How much would you say this would cost them to make this? Because college students are always on a budget. Um, right. Unless mom and daddy puts them on a different budget. Mm -hmm. So how, how much can this cost them? And so they don't have to eat like in the um, dining hall all the time. Because I mean, yeah. you know, they want to look good and you know, Valentine's Day coming up. So they want to cook a little something smooth for mm -hmm. their little sweetie. Um, how, yeah, how, how, you're how probably, much yeah, I mean, you know, I didn't price it out when I did it, to be honest, but I mean, you're probably looking at about $6 a person, something okay. like that, and that's not too bad, that's not too bad at all, but, you know, because you're having vegetables, and you know, vegetables are always more expensive, right, right. I, as opposed to eating a little, you know what, snack, what do you call it, I'm not going to say that lady's name, but you know what I'm saying, um, those little processed food cakey things, like the little, you know, all that, they cost a dollar. I'm yeah, I mean, we like all the know biggest, what they are. I mean, the biggest we thing about you know being a like I said, I have a lot of followers in college. I have a show that we do on the sh on, on my network, and the great thing about it is we do. I mean, you know, no college student wants to actually spend a lot of money. You know, right? I you know, remember. We, I mean, we try to cut costs as much as possible. Like I said, unless mom and daddy puts us on a different budget mm -hmm. um, and everything. And I mean, let's be honest, man. A girl likes a man that can cook. You know what I'm saying? They they, they mm -hmm. like to see a dude in the kitchen. Um, you know, that's kind of sexy. I know I do. That's kind of sexy from time to time. It so. is. I, I like to see my husband vacuum the carpet and cook me something. Oh, okay. You know, he throw, earns. Throw the dollar bills at him. I throw dollar okay. bills at him. Okay, I know. I get, yeah, he gets extra points with me when he does something domestic, okay? Okay, well, so, I got to keep that in mind. I'm, I'm getting married soon, you, so. <laughs> you need to understand how to please the woman, and it is by being domestic, okay? That is going to make her Don't bring happy. flowers, bring a vacuum. That's I'm what, telling you, it's <laughs> the truth. That's what to say. It's the truth. All right, we're getting ready to take a break. Uh, we're going to be back, y'all, in about just about five minutes or so. We're going to be finishing up our cauliflower. You are doing up the cabbage for us for the spring rolls. Right. So you're not going to miss a whole lot. Lot. We're just going to be working on this cabbage. Um, cabbage. What? The cauliflower. We'll be right back. All right. So we're just. Let me just give two seconds because I turned it up to 900. So not 900, but 900. Huh? I can't help it. 900. In Seneca. Yeah. Everybody says Seneca. They don't say Seneca. Can I'm we like, talk about why they say Westminster? I don't no, know, and you know I work there. We can't talk about it? To correct them and be like, Westminster? Yeah, down in Westminster. There's not an extra I. Like, Why? You're it's from West, here. Westminster. It's not Westminster Abbey. Tell Westminster. Why? I mean. Because they all go to church, and the head of the church is the minister. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Minister doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Uh, okay, whatever. I mean, I'm just like, you don't call it Westminster Abbey. And they call okay. it Milo. Don't get me started on that other story about Kmart. We have to stop. Oh, no. That man did his pants all up like that, and he was going to the big Kmart or whatever it was he said. <laughs> the big Kmart. And all the kids were in tow like little ducks. Oh, okay. Bless it all. All right. So this is just about done. Okay. Well, it's not done. I say it's not done, but... It doesn't look too cold. It's not. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> okay. Go to like, go to like 1,500 it's, degrees. <laughs> yeah. It's al dente. Can we say that? Our cauliflower is al dente? 
Okay. Like, like, what happened? All right, so we're adding just real quick our gluten-free um, soy sauce, the tamarind. If y'all don't have this, this stuff is awesome. Had to go to four stores, thank you, but we found it. Okay, this, do you use this? I don't use that now. Unfortunately, mm. I'm still that college student at heart, so I try to find soy sauce on a cheaper scale. Oh, um, this was $2.92. $2.92, okay, well, maybe I can afford that. You know what I mean? Hey, you know Yo. what, that's not a horrible thing to you do. Know. I'm like, I'm like, man. <laughs> Yeah, you putting the sweet and low in your purse, you know, that we on a budget. No. <laughs> oh my His sister does that. She goes and she's like, oh, there's ketchup packets, there's whatever, she's sticking them in her pocket. It's like somebody going to a buffet sticking shrimp in their purse, you know? Uh, no, nah, I'm not that bad. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm not that bad, but I, I do, hey, I do. Y'all, other pe sauce. people on bench are like, yeah, we know. They're like, man, what? Mm-hmm. Okay, we are back. Do you know what? The, t the breaks are going too fast. I'm having way too much fun. But while y'all were gone, what we did is just continue to warm the cauliflower. Right. And we threw some of the gluten-free soy sauce in it, the tamarind, um, which is fantastic. And, you know, you have to be careful when you go out if you have celiac disease or you can't handle gluten. If you have a small intolerance, people don't right. realize how much gluten is actually in soy sauce. And then you right. end up getting sick or bloated and not know why. And a girl being bloated is no good for anybody. That's true. Okay. Because then you got to hear about it too. And okay. it's, it's a bad night. It's a bad <laughs> night. Ask my husband and he will tell you. No, I'll tell you what happened. Before I knew that I had um, celiac disease, we were at a local Chinese place. This is no lie. So we were there and no sooner did we shut the door, we walk out of the place and my stomach went, and I looked like I was six months pregnant. I mean, it was insane. And all wow. of a sudden I started hurting really bad. And it was because of the gluten. Wow. So any weasel, that's not, that's not good. So we've got our cauliflower done. All we did is take some mixed vegetables. Okay. Frozen mixed vegetables. Okay. Throw those in. Now, you know, you can get those for a dollar fifty. You know, at, at the market, right, for the entire bag. Right. This is actually one head of cauliflower and a half a bag of those mixed vegetables. Okay. Okay, so we add those to our wok. Beautiful, beautiful. This and we'll add awesome. our ham back in, just like this. It's looking good already, isn't and it? I, I'm hungry over here, y'all. Y'all just don't understand. I am so hungry. And I like cauliflower. I, I have mm -hmm. been in the military at one point in time in my great life. And one of the biggest things of being in the military is when you're deployed or you're just not around a, mm. a mess hall, they like to call it. You mm -hmm. kind of eat whatever comes around, um, or you just don't eat at all. <laughs> so, I remember. So, so, I mean, this this looks awesome. And to see it in a more mm -hmm. natural, healthier way. Yep. Um, I was very lucky because I was, I was a combat medic in, okay. in the Air Force, and I was actually stationed in Guam. Okay. I was I was on the rock for two years, but they did all, you know the Guamanian food and stuff, and we had a lot of um, Asian food, okay. obviously, and it was fantastic. And so you know we did it with the fried rice and all that, and I kept gaining weight, right? Because I'm over there. Once you get out of basic and they starve you half to death, right? And then you get on your assignment, and you're like, right. oh, oh, food, hello. And then you're in a place like that, and you're tasting all those wonderful things. You can't help it. I anyway, mean, you really can't. And and like I said, you know. This is a better, healthier alternative, mm -hmm. guys. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm starving just looking at it. So it's like when you have that, you know, you, and it doesn't cost that much Hand money. me that, will you? Mm. We're going to get this out of our, yeah, it, it doesn't cost a fortune to do this. And look how much we've made also, right? Enough that you can bring in mm -hmm. after a great Valentine's Day trademark. Should mm -hmm. make this for your sweetheart. <laughs> Absolutely. And I mean, you can totally do this, Tony, because you saw how easy this is, right? right. All it was was pulsing the, um, the cauliflower, getting the frozen vegetables, right? And then the ham and the gluten-free stuff and, and the eggs. That's right. all it was. And it looks like regular fried rice, but it's not. It's not. So we've got just a couple minutes left. And what I'm going to ask you to do, do you see those spring roll wrappers sure. right there? Can you take one of those and stick it in that water? Yeah. Right there on that plate. And we're going to want that to get soft. Okay. Okay. So while that's doing that, we're going to throw our cabbage. And I want you to slice up some of those just like you did the cabbage. Okay. Okay. This is also something very quick. All right. 
I'm just playing with this burner. Normally I would take this thing right off and dump it and throw another pan on here, but I can't because of this burner is so silly. But that's all right. It's not gonna hurt our feelings all that much. I like silly burners. Silly burners. That's right. So there's this, okay. They turn into silly comedians. Yes. <laughs> now, we're gonna take a little bit more of the sesame oil just because I don't have my olive oil within reach. Okay, whatever, who cares? A little cabbage in here. Now, do you love cabbage? I actually do. Now, one of the greatest things that I cook at home is we call it great soul food, and I take a good cabbage mm. and I steam it up. You know, stuff that stuff that you know keep your mama know that you can make some good food for yes. you. Yes. Some good food, comfort food is what I like to call it. But mm -hmm. at the same time, it's it's really good. It's what they say they love yes. in the south. So I love onions and cabbage. I absolutely love that, and it's an antioxidant. Super good for you. So we're just going to take, we took some matchstick carrots, some cabbage, let's throw a little bit of these onions in here. Okay. Okay, and then we have some water chestnuts. Okay. We do. Little bit of water chestnuts to this. And you can add meat to this, or you do not have to add meat to this. It's totally up to you. But because I thought, well, we don't have any meat. Uh, well, we have our ham in here, right. but we want a little bit of meat. So we're going to take some of that shredded chicken and place that in here as well. And if you want, I was going to say we could even do one just a veggie, a veggie option. Um, but that's okay. Okay, a little bit more of the soy sauce in here. Do y'all smell this? It smells so super yum. It smells yeah. awesome. Everybody's going, yeah, baby. We're like, let's have it done. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah, this is supposed to be a fast cooking show. Come on. Okay. Like, but believe it or not. This is the true fast food. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, to tell you, if you want some fast food, we're talking about, what, 15 minutes start to finish? That's the most. You know, and we've got it. The same amount of time going through Chick-fil-A drive-thru, you can have this. For real. <laughs> and there's some fast food restaurants that, you know what? It's longer than that. And it's packed with all kinds of yucky things. Right. Okay. Now, just a little bit of chicken, okay? Just for good measure. How about a lot of chicken? If you're going to do something, do it. What the what? Okay. Plus, you got to have a lot of chicken. You know, we're in the South. I mean, that's like our number yes. one meat. But you also want protein. And right. you know you want to have at least 100 grams of protein, right, to stay fit, right. to stay lean. I need to up my protein. But look at how... Mm. Got to keep, gotta keep it right. <gasps> so how, how much more softer should we have this okay. spring roll is it, a, is it totally soft and pliable? Can you just mm. kind of move it around so that we'll be able to fold it? Um, Not all the way yet. We got a few more seconds, I think. Okay. <laughs> all right. And if it doesn't work out, we're going to throw it on a plate and fake it till we make it. What? <laughs> okay. We said, oh, we meant for it to go like this. All right. Okay. We're going to come back in just a second. Let us finish this up, and then we'll wrap the, the rolls. We'll give that a taste. We're going to talk to you some more. Okay. I want to focus on you. I want everybody to learn who you are and what you've got going on. Okay. All right. Come right back. We'll see you in a second. Okay. I can't stand the smell anymore. I mean, it's so good. It is so good. And I'm getting hungry. My stomach is like, Arr! okay. I'm, I'm, I'm hungry. So can you, I want to put a scoop of that on this plate. Okay. And okay. I'm going to roll this and I want you to talk about, you know, tell us your journey. Tell us, you know, first of all, tell us about CIA media and about the radio show and okay. all that stuff. Oh, you need to, no, -uh, you need to put more than that more on. More I mean, look, he tried I to need, be I need a, a, su a southern, uh -uh. a southern scoop. There you go. Yeah, thank you. Like those, you those, mean it. Those okay. Westminster scoops. Yes, <laughs> like you mean it. Those, those Seneca scoops. Okay, okay so um, we're taking our mixture, right, right, real quick. And this is just, ooh, it's the chicken and the water chestnuts and, wow. you know, the cabbage and what else do we have in there a little yeah, bit of onion. onion yeah okay so you're just gonna you're just gonna wrap just gonna it, roll it. Mm -hmm. just like wrap so it. just like so okay and this is gluten-free okay. okay and if you want to just make a salad out of it you know just put it on the plate you can do that as well but look how super cute that is that is pretty, pretty all right cute. so talk to us I'm gonna wash my hands real quick but I am listening all right um, basically, CI Media was a company that was established back in like 2015. But the, ir the irony part of it was it was really vision established way before that. Um, I was a college student, about to graduate from college. Shout out to USC Upstate and Tri County Technical College, the schools I went to. <laughs> and, um, and what happened after that is like a college graduate, about to graduate, need a job. Because mm -hmm. um, the hard part about getting an education is to find a job afterwards. And I couldn't find anything. 
and I, but I wanted to be a television producer. I wanted to write movies, uh, mm-hmm. films, um, just be a jack of all trades in the entertainment industry without actually being on stage at the time. And mm-hmm. wasn't happening, wasn't happening. And I went through a period of time like, okay, what's going on? Like, how how is this going to work out? What am I supposed to do? Am I did I manage and major in the wrong thing? Because mm-hmm. uh, let's you be start real. Questioning. Yeah, I yeah. mean, let's be real. Like, when we're in college, you know, a typical person has changed their major at least twice. Um, unfortunately, I was an overachiever. I changed it six times. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm like, I was a biology major, a drama major, a psych major. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, so you got to look Business. at it from, from a different perspective. Mm-hmm. But I went ahead and I had one show idea, um, which at the time was becoming a radio, you know, radio podcaster. Uh, my passion was always television, but I just... I knew it was more cost effective to be a radio podcaster at the time. And okay. Because it didn't it didn't take a lot of money. I mean, you know, if you had a computer, you have, you know, a microphone, didn't have to be the best. I mean, you can go to Walmart and get a microphone for like less than twenty bucks. Um, so you just started going on air. Right. Okay. And once I did that, um, I, I became a student of the game again of what it took to be a creative person. Yeah. Um, I critique myself. I still do this to this day, but I critique myself in each show. Um, I always said, well, what can I do better? Why, why is this important to me? Um, and what happens for it not to be, you know, the biggest show that you can do? Okay. Um, I learned from each guest that I had on the show. That's why the show was very unscripted at the time. Mine is too, yeah. We just went ahead and just started working. Um, I started doing uh, films or a few films from time to time. And after a while, it was like, I just kind of keep working. And mm-hmm. I had to do what most people say. Um, Steve Harvey wrote this out and start jumping. Basically, I started knowing what my successors could be. I started m- getting mentors instead of asking them for money. Because what, what's the crazy thing about it is once you realize what you want to do, a lot of times people want money to get it, get it done. Mm-hmm. One of the biggest things, and I just recently learned this again, is that you have to have a business plan when you start your business. But there's other two things that you should have, which is a marketing plan and your strategic plan. Right. Last but not least, you should have a ministry plan because what are you what are you supposed to be doing with your life? Mm-hmm. How is your business supposed to help you grow and help people around you grow as well? And you know, a lot of times when we have a business, we don't think about that. We think about we want money. Right. And we need money, um, but we don't really need money to get started the money is going to come if we do everything else right right Right. because if you have a super faith i live by five principles and my staff does too you have to have faith first because Mm -hmm. if you don't have faith how can number one how can you do what you think you should be doing Mm -hmm. and you have to understand that it's a process you have to understand that you're gonna have some bumps you got some bruises Mm -hmm. you got some cuts you're gonna have some some egos blown at you oh yeah uh, <laughs> oh we know yeah um you then you also have to have strong work ethic I, i'm a huge sports guy mm-hmm. and one of the biggest things we just had the super bowl the other week shout out to the patriots tom brady and his crew mm-hmm. um but at the same time those guys had to prepare they're very talented right but work ethic got them to the Super Bowl. That's right, and we'll talk about that when we come back from the break too, because that's really interesting. But tell them, I mean, because you do several different things. I right. mean, you have CIA Media, but you also have the, the radio show. Right. I mean, you're working on a lot of different things. Right, well, we have the, the radio show, the radio station. It came from being a podcast, now to an actual station on TuneIn. That's right. Um, yeah, it was just something that we, we started uh, a while back, and the crazy thing about that was I was working, partnering with a company called blogtopradio.com, mm-hmm. which we st- are still a part of. And I wanted, my vision when I first started is that if we're gonna have radio, I wanna be the best. Mm-hmm. Um, I think, it, like a sports guy, I wanna be the best. So with wanting to be the best, I didn't wanna be limited anymore. And with Blog Talk, at one point in time, we were limited a little bit. Mm-hmm. So I did a partnership with TuneIn instead, and it was probably the best thing I've probably ever done. So. Um, mm-hmm. Once I did that, I went ahead and said, okay, uh, let's start developing. So ministry plan, going back to that, was my ministry plan was to help others, to help them become their dream as well. I love that. We talked about that a couple weeks ago on the show, right. about lifting others up. 
you know, if you really want to rise, you've got to lift other people up. We're going to take a real quick break. Okay. When we come back, we're going to talk some more to Tony. We're going to taste this food. We're going to hear some more wonderful music from Daniel. Right. We've got some more exciting things, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, so Tony is finishing up. He went ahead and threw another one of these spring roll wrappers um, in there because one of these is not going to be enough. I'm just going to tell you right this minute. That's one, true. One is not enough. That's true. Okay, so let's take a little bit more of our mixture. And, um, you know, I love, I love the things that we're talking about. You know, we had, right. we had said at the beginning of the show that we were going to talk about, you know, what it takes. You've got this vision, right? You've had this right. dream, what you're going to do. And... It's interesting to watch everybody else's journey, but I want to talk a little bit about what keeps people going. And you've got a shoestring budget and you know, you have this dream and you feel like, okay, this is what I'm supposed to do with my life. And you're all excited and pumped up. And you go, well, I have very limited resources, maybe not a lot of support, don't right. maybe have a lot of money. And how do we keep going? Well, I can't speak for everyone. I can only speak from my experience and from my experiences, the five, I, I hate to go back to the five principles, there's really five principles. Okay. You still have to have your faith. Um, you know, when, I, when the company got started, it was never a situation that said, can I write for Amazon Prime? Can I write for Discovery Communications? Can I have my own Roku? None, none of that stuff was, it was a, mm -hmm. a dream, you know, a possibility at that time. Um, it was more of a situation that I understood what I wanted to do and I stayed prayed up. I think a lot of times, a lot of people will look to what you have but they don't know what kind of relationship you have with God, right? Mm -hmm. So they say, "Oh, they were lucky," and "Oh, they're successful," or they had, you know, money was given to them, or whatever. But and that's, that's not, not the that's case. Not, that's not true because that's right. When I first started my company, I didn't really have any money. Mm -hmm. Like literally, I was flat broke. Like mm -hmm. college student, one on one, zero dollars in the bank. So, yes, yeah, so, I know. So <laughs> we we know. So I mean, what I had to do is I had to be. I came creative and instead of one of the things that a lot of musicians are learning to do now since social media is so big is that I turned to social media and made it profitable. You hear people that make money off Instagram and YouTube all the time, but it's really the truth. You know, we went ahead and made partnerships with companies mm -hmm. instead of making advertisers from them mm -hmm. because they were going to pay me to do what they wanted an advertiser to do anyway. And that's, that's what, a whole different show that's, because that's I know people want to know about that. I know my bid chat folks, I know because we have people watching from Canada, from, I mean, from New York, from everywhere. Right. And these people, that's, that's one of the beauties of this show, you know, because you know, we're filming this with hard cameras behind the computer. We're right. live streaming at the same time. And all of us are talented people, especially the people on bid chat. A lot of these people that are watching us, they have shows too. And they're wanting to know, well, how are y'all making it work? What are you doing, right? What's not working? How did you overcome these hurdles? And then we have a lot of musicians like Daniel, a lot of people come on the show and they're all starting out, they're up and comers. And sometimes you look at successful people and you think, well, gosh, it's never gonna happen for me. And so that's one of the things that I absolutely love about this because it's a very authentic and real show where we can say, look, this is the real deal. This is, it's a hard road, but it's worth it. And this is how we do it. And your passion should overweigh your paycheck period. I, I tell mm -hmm. a lot of young people this all the time is that when you first start out in anything, even in your career, once you graduate from college and you might have student loan debt like crazy, Thank you. Your passion is going to have to pay your bills. And what that really means is that that fire inside of you is going to have to make it seem that your goal of your vision is worth it. Because mm -hmm. let's be honest, you're going to have days where you're not going to love life. Life is not going to love you back. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to question, is it worth it anymore? And mm -hmm. It happens to everybody. I don't care who you are. You can go, if you know Bill Gates, you can go talk to him. If you can talk to the CEO of Facebook, which is like what everybody uses from time to time. Now, obviously, you can talk to any CEO and they're really going to be real with you. That's one of the things. Eventually, they said to themselves that I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. There's not enough money coming in. Um, I'm dang near homeless to a certain extent. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm going to keep it real. I've had to the point where I have not have my lights on, mm -hmm. you know, I've had days so where it's, you know, you want steak, but your budget says you're eating like spaghetti you know? Yeah, top I ramen. mean, it's, it's, it's more of a situation like, but there's days that you're going to have to where it's, we came from working content in a library. You know, my mm -hmm. team and I, we were talking last week, we started writing content before Amazon came in the picture or discover anybody in, the, in a local library. Yeah. 
And, and I think, and I love that, and I appreciate that you are sharing that because, again, you know, people can get on camera and they can make it look easy. We can all do that. Oh, no. But the reality is, and, and I say this to folks all the time, and when I go out and do, you know, motivational speaking and things, and, and it's following your passion, doing what makes your soul sing. And if you can get up every day and say, you know, I, I would do this for free, and a lot of times we are doing it for free. We do it for um, free a lot of days. But that's what you <laughs> should be doing. It's making your soul sing, and it's giving, it's giving people, you know, you're, you're impacting other people. You know, the money will come, but you have to have that stick to You right. have to believe in that dream. It's essential. It's crucial. You know, yeah, there are hard days, and I understand. You know, and you could even be like, when I mean, we're still paying off my college loan. I, I mean, my grandchildren be paying off my college loan because I went to grad school, and I mean, it was 75 grand, and I mean, I'm telling you, okay? I mean, I just don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, so, you know, you're going to be doing that and you have these things but you have to understand if you're doing what you love and if you are serving other people and if your if your passion is helping other people right and lifting them up it will be worth it and it will i mean you know the the hardest thing for a lot of people is understanding your pride you gotta learn how to mm -hmm. check yourself i call it in in my, in my meeting someday you gotta learn how to check yourself you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And sometimes you gotta check yourself at the door. So for me, it was, I had to learn how to check myself when I feel like I wanna give up. And yeah. what happens is, like I said, I have those five principles written on my office door. I have it written on our production door. Um, I might throw a quiz out my team, you know, to tell them, well, what do you, I mean, it can look like five different places, you know, so they don't have yep. to give me the lie. But, you know, what do you guys know? Because I thought those principles were just for CIA and then came down to it's for everyday life. Because um, you can't be successful in life without knowing your understanding, your passion, mm -hmm. your work ethic, um, your understanding of your belief, and most importantly, you gotta be patient. I think we yes. wanna be successful so quick and that we live in a microwave world, so we wanna be, we wanna be successful so quick, but we have to learn how to be patient and enjoy the ride. Exactly. And we're going <laughs> to we're going to call it a day with that, but I want you to taste this for me real quick. Okay. We're going to be bringing Daniel back in to sing um do do we do what? <laughs> do me a favor. Tell everybody your Instagram um, name so they can they can follow you there. Okay. Well, I'll definitely tell everybody our Instagram and our our website. Um our website is www.cimedianetwork.com and our Instagram is cimedia15 and the reason why it's 15 is because the the official part of the company was established in 2015. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you don't know from the Bible, the number seven and the number 15 is more highly blessful. Um, and I didn't know that when we first started it, so I can't take that credit for it. But what I can take credit for is that we have some awesome things in the mix. We have our, our own new tune-in. So if you ever have a tune-in app or you need the tune-in mm -hmm. app, you go there. You have the best Christian and positive music that you can have and the best radio DJs too. Awesome. Plus also our, our Roku channel is coming out this March and we also have our new magazine coming out this March. He's so. a busy, busy man. <laughs> so, <laughs> he is a busy man. But give that a taste and also go to Joanne Johnson INC on Facebook, Instagram mm -hmm. and Twitter and also to www.joannejohnsoninc.com. You can see more about Tony. You can get a link to his website. Right. Daniel as well. Um, all of the co-hosts have, um, we have, you know, Get in Traffic. We just did that website um, real quick. And then um, you can learn all about the show. Also the other show, Empower Your Body, Empower Your Mind. You can get a copy of the book, Empower Your Body, Empower Your Mind. Again, like us at Joanne Johnson, INC. And what do you think of the meal? It's awesome. If y'all don't have this at home for Valentine's Day, yes, you better learn how to cook it right here. All right, <laughs> all right, y'all. We are going to be doing our bid chat. We're going live um, four o'clock on Sunday. Uh, we're going to be moving to a new studio next Sunday in Greenville, South Carolina, the Cook Station. We're very excited about that. So make sure that you tune in for that. We love you. God bless you. And let's close it out with Daniel. He's going to be doing another song for us. Have a wonderful week. <laughs> Isn't it good? It is good. I need for something healthy.
Thank you.